Hey everyone, today on Big Out Books, I'm here to do my February wrap up. I had an awesome reading month. I've got 15 books here to tell you about today, which is a surprisingly high number considering that my reading got off to a very slow start at the beginning of the month. And that's because I tried doing an experiment called Faithful February, where I was going to try to be a monogamous reader. So I think I mentioned this in one of my most recent videos in that I'm the kind of reader where I like having a lot of variety and options, so I've found that I usually read at least seven books at one time. So that number usually sits somewhere from seven to ten, which is a lot, and I was recognizing that. So this month I thought I would step back, I would just read one book, at a time and that was going to be it. And unfortunately that just really didn't work out for me. The book that I was trying to read was not one that I was really interested in reading often so I just ended up not reading for like a few days in a row. It was a really slow start then I decided to just quit Faithful February entirely and my reading picked up from there. I also had a great reading month because I was inspired by Black History Month to pick up the books that I already owned by Black authors, and I didn't really intend to spend my whole month doing that, but I was just really enjoying everything that I was reading, so I decided to keep the ball rolling. So 12 out of the 15 books I have to talk about are written by Black authors. So let's start off this video by talking about the three books that I did not read because of Black History Month. The first book that I picked up this month was Last Night in Nuke by Niviek Corneliuson. This is a debut novel that I picked up because I knew it was going to be about the lives of queer 20-something year olds living in Greenland, which is like nothing else that I've ever read before. Though this book does deliver on that premise, I did not enjoy it for stylistic reasons. I don't know if we can blame it on the translation, but this had a very simplistic and juvenile kind of voice, and I just felt really awkward reading most of it. So like, here's an example of one of the passages. It's about a girl seeing another girl at a party and being attracted to her. She looks me in the eye. She smiles. What is she doing? Is she flirting? I send her a broad smile. My insides are burning and I feel my face flush. She notices it and smiles once more. Ouch, my heart. I'm vanished. An unknown feeling engulfs me. It calls itself love with a capital L. Love? Oh, come on. You haven't met love. This isn't love. It's not love. This isn't love. Give me a break, for heaven's sake. So like writing like that, it's just not very sophisticated. It feels very like teen journal entry thing. So it wasn't really my jam. Even though this book is introducing some interesting ideas of like the isolation of what it's like living in Greenland and some of the racism that you experience, particularly when Greenlanders are in Denmark. Um, those are interesting ideas, but ultimately they just weren't developed enough. This just felt very rushed. Each of these stories explores a different character and each story just felt like it ended way too quickly to get a very nuanced portrayal of each of these people. Even the setting of Greenland, it was only briefly described. I didn't really feel immersed into that world. This book is more about the drama going on in the personal lives of the characters, so that's not really what I was looking for in this book, so I found it disappointing and pretty forgettable. The next two books that I have to talk about were Random Picks. I've been inspired on booktube of people who have TBR jars or other ways of trying to introduce some random books into their reading month. My TBR is so out of control that I can't use a jar. I actually have a TBR box where I'm trying to draw from and pull a few random titles each month. And one of those random books was Keep the Espedistra Flying by George Orwell. And I'm sorry to start off this video in such a negative mood, but I also did not care for this book at all. Again, it sounds like an okay premise. It's about a guy who hates money and how it ruins people in society. And he's like gonna step back from that. He's not willing to to work a dead-end job and live a basic life like everyone else because he's an artist, he's a poet. So, you know, if you can see where I'm going with this, uh, the main character in this book is kind of the worst. So he's just a pretty miserable person and all he does is just ruin all of his relationships because he only complains about how he doesn't have money and life is horrible without money, but he refuses to try and get some. So he was just an insufferable person and I don't need the main character to be likable by any means, but this guy was just like annoying. It's just like a mosquito buzzing around your head constantly. He also just made me cringe so many times. I was just embarrassed reading this book. I wasn't enjoying myself. I needed it to be over and yet I wasn't able to read more than 20 pages at a sitting because <laughs> it just made me so uncomfortable. So I did not like this one and I can see why it's not one of Orwell's more well-known books. 
My next random pick of the month was a graphic novel. This one's called Nick Cave, Mercy on Me by Reinhard Kleist. This is all about the life of the Australian punk rock musician Nick Cave. So it's kind of about him growing up in Australia and starting his band and some of the difficulties they faced as they were trying to build their careers. But then it also goes in this other meta direction where Nick Cave is being confronted by characters from his own songs. And if you know Nick Cave's music, it is very grisly and dark and there are a lot of murders and unfortunate things that happen to his song characters so they are kind of coming back and confronting their author and they're saying why did you do this to me what kind of person are you so there were some interesting questions here about the relationship between the creator and the fictional creation if there should be any sense of moral obligation on the part of the creator so I liked those elements the biographical sections were a bit uneven for me I found that we jumped from event to event very quickly without getting a full picture of what was actually happening but it was cool reading about the punk rock scene in the 80s in like London and Australia and I feel like the artwork did really capture this like visceral nature of Nick Cave's music. So for that reason I enjoyed myself while reading this and I think if you're a fan of Nick Cave or punk rock music then you might get a kick out of checking out this cool graphic novel. Now that those three are out of the way I'm gonna talk about all the books that I read by black authors this month. I think I'll start off with talking about the novels that I read in the order that I read them and then near the end of the video we can go through the poetry, short stories, and non-fiction. So the first one that I picked up was Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James who is is a Jamaican author that is now currently living in the United States and this was my most anticipated release of 2019. I have a few fun facts about this book. Um, my first fun fact is that I own two copies of this now because I pre-ordered it and my pre-order copy was taking too long to arrive in the mail so there was one day where it was a snow day so I had the whole day off school and I wanted to spend it reading this book so I actually went out to the bookstore and bought a second copy because I just could not wait. Another fun fact about this book is that I now have a signed copy. I was lucky enough to get to see Marlon James speak in person in Toronto and it was so cool. I have actually never met an author before for a book signing because I get so like intimidated by fan encounters. I don't like the power imbalance. I don't like meeting a person who means so much to me and they have no idea who I am. So I've actually never done this before, but I felt like this book, it was important enough that I just wanted Marlon to sign my copy. So that's what happened. I was very nervous, but I'm very happy to have this signed copy because it's a great memory of the book talk that I went to. Honestly, I could listen to that man talk for days. Like an hour wasn't nearly enough time, but that's okay. The last fun fact I have about this book is that I was sitting down to film this wrap up and I was thinking about what I was gonna say about this book and I realized that I just had so much that I wanted to say that I then stopped filming this wrap up and started filming a review video for Black Lab Red Wolf which has been posted by now probably so that's why if you go and watch that review you'll see that like I'm wearing the same thing and in the same setup because I just realized I have too many thoughts about this book to share with you in this quick wrap-up setting but basically if you want a quick summary of that review I thought that this book was a really exciting blend of fantasy and literary techniques I loved how this book plays with fantasy conventions and sets them into this imaginary African inspired world as well as using a lot of literary techniques to question the method of storytelling and how narratives are constructed and what kind of information may be false or distorted and what kind of information may be withheld so I'm I'm very excited about this project. I can't wait to see where the series is going and I really liked this one. Next I finally read a book that I've owned for years and just hadn't gotten around to yet and that was I Am Not Sidney Poitier by Percival Everett. This is about a man who looks a lot like Sidney Poitier but his name is not Sidney Poitier so <laughs> there's a lot of bizarre jokes in here about uh, people not being able to comprehend his name or his identity and this is kind of about his adventures throughout life. He is faced with a lot of obstacles. Life does him dirty so many times and he just has to work his way out of these impossible situations and I loved the satirical edge of this novel. You can see that Percival Everett is handling some major societal issues particularly dealing to racism in the American South and yet this book is not heavy in tone it's just very light and sarcastic and funny and I just loved the sense of humor in this book. 
Percival Everett has such a unique style. I've never read anything quite like this before. It was so bizarre and strange, but I just enjoyed myself the whole time. There were even these dream sequences that were referring to scenes from Sidney Poitier films, and I haven't seen any Sidney Poitier films, so I know that a lot of the pop culture references went over my head, but it really didn't affect my enjoyment of the book. I'm sure I might have appreciated the cleverness of it more, but I still had a good time not really knowing what was going on. The next book that I read was Freshwater by Akwake Emezi. This is a debut novel that came out last year, I believe, and this was another book that just really impressed me. In some ways, I feel like this book is the dark twin to Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, since both books are centered around the experiences of characters who grow up in Nigeria and then go to America for their post-secondary education. But I say that this one is more of the dark twin because I feel like Americana is a lot more of the accessible narrative. There's lots of humor in there to engage the reader and there's also like a big romance narrative. This one's a lot shorter but it has a lot more bite to it. Yes I am referring to like the snake motif that runs through this book and this book also has a whole extra element that makes the story even more complex since we are dealing with a character who is the host to a system of personalities. This book explores dissociative identity disorder and how that can affect the life of the host of the system, but it's not doing so through like a medical mental illness perspective, but more of this metaphysical one where the alternate personalities that are developing in the system are actually the children of gods and they still have this tenuous link to the world beyond and they each have their own motivations and reasons for acting the way that they do and how they want to control the body to perform. So this book has a fascinating premise and a very creative execution and the other bonus about this book is that it's a page turner. I could not put this one down. There was like a lot of stressful and intense moments in the story so I thought that this was just a really unique read and a really engaging one. I also got around to another debut novel from last year and that was She Would Be King by Wayatu Moore. This is a book set in Liberia and this is taking place during the earlier days of the settlement. We are introduced to characters who are moving over from America to set up their new life in Liberia but they're faced with a lot of challenges as you might imagine. I found the history in this book to be very fascinating. There are also some magical realism elements where there are three characters in here that have these kind of supernatural abilities that they use to try to help people in Liberia and it's just kind of one of those books where like the premise sounds great but the execution just didn't end up living up to that for me. There is something that is very calm and sedate and steady about the narrative voice of this book that just didn't work for me in what I was hoping was going to happen with this story. So I kind of had a lack of engagement with this book. So I think that was just my experience. It was still a cool book and I'm glad that I read it, but it just wasn't as like fist pumpingly awesome as I was hoping it was going to be. Still a really fascinating historical era to read about though. I have yet another debut novel to talk about, although this one is still quite a new release, and that is American Spy by Lauren Wilkinson. This was another book that I thought had a really cool premise, but just didn't really live up to that in the execution, though I still had fun while reading this book. So it's about a woman who is working for the FBI in the 80s, I believe, and the glass ceiling struggle is real for her. She kind of realizes as a black woman in the agency that she's not really being taken seriously, but then she ends up getting this opportunity to become a spy. She's supposed to get some dirt on Thomas Sankara, who is the charismatic and communist leader of Burkina Faso, who is based on a real historical figure, and things get complicated when she starts to get some like romantic attachments with him. There were some intriguing components to this book, like how America and the CIA were so involved in the business of these small African countries, especially during the Cold War, as they wanted to have this like pro-capitalist influence. So some engaging ideas in here, but unfortunately I really did not like the structure of this book. This is a novel that's framed as a letter that the spy woman is writing to her two young children and this just did not read anything like a letter that you would write to your kids. Like there were just so many superfluous details so like that just kind of kept bugging me this. It's like this is not information that you would give to your kid in a letter form. I think this book would have just worked a lot better if she was thinking these thoughts in her imagination. Then the time jumps and the literary style would make more sense than it does 
as a letter. I also really did not like the last line of this book. You know when you're reading a book and it's kind of like mediocre the whole way through, but then you hit that last sentence and it just, <laughs> I could not. It left a really bad taste in my mouth that unfortunately did not make me feel like I really liked this book very much. So this one was a miss for me, unfortunately. And the last book that I read this month was Akata Witch by Nyeri Okorafor. This is a book that I was actually reading for professional reasons. And I'm teaching an English as a second language course. And we always struggle with trying to find compelling books that are actually going to make our students want to read. The novel that we're teaching right now is kind of notoriously depressing. So I thought it'd be good to have an alternative in the classroom. And I think that this book really might fit the bill. This is a fantasy book. It's a coming of age tale about a girl who is living in Nigeria and she realizes that she has special powers and there exists this whole world of leopard people who have these magical abilities and then she makes some friends who are also leopard people and they have to figure it out and learn about their powers and get involved in all sorts of fun stuff. So one of the reasons I thought this could really work as a book to use in my English class is because everyone always says, oh I wish that we could read Harry Potter. But everyone's already seen the Harry Potter movies and those books can be pretty long so I thought this is a story that is like pretty similar to Harry Potter but set in Nigeria. So um, I had a lot of fun reading this one. I don't read a lot of YA or middle grade fantasy so you know it's really fast paced. It keeps you turning the pages. It's fun. There's some cool imaginative details about this world so it's probably not one that I'd pick up for myself usually but I had a lot of fun reading this one and I'm hoping that I will maybe get the chance to teach it. So those were the novels that I read this month. I'm gonna now try to quickly cover the short stories, poetry collections, and nonfiction books that I read this month. The only short story collection I got to was The Ways of White Folks by Langston Hughes. I had only ever read his poetry before, but I found his short stories to be pretty enjoyable. He's got a very plain style, but each of these stories was engaging in its own way. They were mostly about interactions between white people and black people in America. And the thing with these stories was they would either take this like comedic turn where it was kind of laughing at like how ignorant rich white people can be um, or they would take this really dark turn and they would end in some kind of violent event like a lynching. So there was definitely some contrast in this collection and you never knew if the story was one that was going to make you laugh or one that was going to leave you feeling real depressed at the world. As for poetry, I read Citizen and American Lyric by Claudia Rankin. This was a really powerful poetry collection. It kind of eases the reader in at the beginning. At first it is kind of comical, these jabs at these racial microaggressions. And as you continue through the poem, you realize how more severe the problems have become and the stakes are actually quite high. So this is a very intense experience and I liked that as the poem continues there's almost like a breakdown in meaning and the language becomes more abstract so it was a very cool reading experience. I also like the way that different pieces of artwork were incorporated throughout the text so this was a different poetry experience for me and one that gave me a lot to think about. I also read Sunjata as told by Bamba Suso and Bana Canute. So this is a West African legend about this hero, Sunjata, and how he overcame this evil magician guy and ended up creating what would become the Mali Empire. This is an interesting book to sit down and read because it's really not designed to be read. This story is part of the oral tradition and in this collection you have two Jalis who are performing the song and telling the story. So I liked how there were two different takes on the same story involved in the same collection so you can kind of see how each of them have their own spin on it. And I found this was kind of a dull experience when you were just sitting and reading it but if you go on YouTube and you can find there are all these cool musical performances. So that seems to be the way to go with experiencing this story. But still, this was my first foray into the world of African myths and legends, so I'm excited to continue to keep exploring. And lastly, I have three nonfiction books to talk about. The first one is Lady Sings the Blues by Billie Holiday with William Dufty. This is a controversial memoir about Billie Holiday's life. If you kind of look into this one, you'll see that there's a lot of controversy over how much of this is fabricated versus how much of this is really authentic. 
Hook or Ghost Ridden or whether Billie Holiday just kind of threw this thing together to get some money. I'm not a Billie Holiday expert and I can't tell you how much of this is true or false, but all I can say is I had a really enjoyable time reading this. Billie Holiday has a real direct like tell it like it is kind of attitude and particularly the chapters in the beginning about her young life were wild. Like there were so many bananas things happening that you hope that she's making it up because it was really intense. I'm finding this weird thing that I tend to enjoy memoirs more when truth is being called into question and I'm okay with that because really I'm here for a story. I don't really need to know what happened in real life. There are some gaps in the story. You don't really get to see how she goes from making no money at these nightclubs to becoming a big star, but there still is some relevant commentary in here on like racism and the criminal justice system and how drug addicts are treated, where basically she kind of has the more modern view of seeing drug addicts as people who are dealing with an illness rather than these hardcore criminals that need to be locked away. So there were some interesting thoughts in here and I enjoyed getting to know Billie Holiday better so I quite liked this one. I then read the essay collection This Will Be My Undoing by Morgan Jerkins. I remember starting to read this essay collection last year and then I put it down because something just rubbed me the wrong way about it. And I'm so glad that I picked it back up because I actually really enjoyed this collection. These essays are all kind of loosely structured around Morgan Jerkin's own experience and she's sharing her experiences being a black woman in America and how she's had to overcome some of her self-image issues and what it was like for her to be at an Ivy League college and what it's like for her as a writer. I also like how Morgan Jerkins is clearly an intelligent lady and she can break down all these intellectual ideas, but then she also doesn't mind going into like graphic overshare territory with some details from her personal life. Like there are a lot of very intimate details discussed in these essays and I think that that takes a lot of guts. So I really respected that Morgan Jerkins wasn't afraid to share so much about herself for us to get this understanding of who she is and how she sees the world. And the last nonfiction book that I have to talk about is Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by Ibram X. Kendi. And this was so good. I can't believe how thorough and comprehensive this book is in around 500 pages. I mean, it's really impressive. This is tackling the subject of where racist ideas originated and how they have proliferated throughout the centuries. So at the start of the book, you're in like the early days of first contact between Europeans and Africans. And then you continue to go throughout American history in particular, up through to more the present day. So that's a lot of stuff to cram into this book. This book is brilliantly structured. All of the events seem somehow neatly tied together and I learned so much. I feel like I was constantly bothering my boyfriend while I was reading this book to be like, did you know this? Did you know this? Like I was learning so much. And I like the point that he makes in this book and that some people think that racism is a product of ignorance, but actually he's kind of trying to argue that it is usually like very educated people who are coming up with these racist ideas and they're using these racist ideas as a tool to keep their power and then these racist ideas then filter down and then ends up in the minds of more uneducated ignorant people. I think that that's a really fascinating angle to explore. Unfortunately these racist ideas that are produced by intellectuals have some very real world consequences and that can be upsetting to read about but this book just gave me so much to think about and I cannot believe how just clear and lucid the prose was. It was so easy to understand some really complex ideas. So I would recommend this book for everyone. It gave me so much to think about and it was a really perfect nonfiction read for Black History Month. So that's it for the books that I read in February. As you can see, it was a really solid reading month. Also, shout out to Daylight Savings Time. It's the reason why it is six o'clock right now and it's still bright and sunny and you can still see my face. I feel like in like all of my videos for the past few months, it has like gradually faded to darkness while I've been filming. So that's exciting. Um, please let me know how your February went. Did you have any standouts? Did you read anything for Black History Month? Please let me know. I would love to talk more in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again later.